Dude. Hey everyone! Hey, we're just gonna wait here a second. We've been talking about it all week because we were out fishing, out fishing some deep, deep crappies, and we thought it would be a good conversation to have about how to release fish when you're fishing deep. So before we get to that, um, how about a little fishing report? So we've been having all kinds of crazy weather lately. I think that's something that's really on everybody's mind. It was like rainy all, you know, the end of summer, gosh, all summer into fall and um, gosh, right into snow and practically into winter here. Yeah, we were super wet and then all of a sudden just cold. So we're finding that a lot of our lakes are, um, the water levels are up a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, compared to normal. And so if you have favorite um, spots going into ice, your depths might be a little bit off compared to where they normally are. Um, and so that really led us to go out and find fish, see where they're at now, because um, that will really help give us a good idea of where they'll be in winter. Well, and that being said, we kind of focused on transitional areas. So you want to when you're looking at your your flasher or your uh your hummingbird or whatever you want to look for the color changes in between the the like the light green and where it starts to be orange or vice versa where you have hard substrate and soft substrate those lines um and it just happened to be the lake we were fishing that was around that 20 foot mark and then anything past that we were finding fish out and um we were actually using our underwater camera and Emily noticed something kind of cool. Um, with, with the fish, they were really, you know, they always look for a place to be. And so, um, you know, when you get different water changes and sometimes people will talk about the thermocline, so where the cold and the warm water meet. Um, and in this case, actually the water temperatures were very much the same. It was like 47 degrees surface temps and 50 degrees, almost all the way at the bottom, according to our aqua view. Um, but what we noticed in putting the camera down is that the fish were really gathering right on that line of where the light and the dark meet. So because you are fishing so deep, you do miss that light at a certain point. Um, and that happens to be in the lake that we were at 19 to 20 feet. Um, and so like when Josh is saying, we're fishing anything past that, you know, if we're in 25, 28 feet, um, the camera would go down and the fish would get a little bit spooked for a second and they would all go right into the dark and then the camera would go into the dark and they would all kind of come right back up and hover again. Um, these fish, you could sometimes see them on the graph. Sometimes we're getting bites right at the bottom, but just a really interesting thing to observe with the camera. Well, and one of the other things we saw were big predators out cruising in 40 feet of water. Uh, we caught a couple pike just cruising around, hitting, picking off crappies that were, that were up in the, in the light area. And that it, it is almost like a floor. Like you can see where it's light and then all of a sudden dark drops off and that has, that has a little bit to do with what, like the, the color selection that you pick too. Cause normally we fish lakes that you use lots of natural colors. So you use silvers and, and greens, um, lots of clear, lots of, lots of flake stuff that emulates the, the, the bait a lot closer. But we were finding ourselves using more like chartreuse and pink and stuff you would think in more, um, dirty or stained water and and that's because they were just hovering in that dark and then they would wait for stuff to come over the top and then they pick it off and go back down and so those are good things to keep keep in mind when you're out there in the last couple weeks of or week with these 32 degree days um of boating weather um, and you know, all of these points kind of led us to the conversation that we were at today. Um, we did notice a lot of the predators around, um, and we, we did, you know, notice that we were fishing really deep. And one of the things that you have to be really careful of is reeling up the fish slow enough that you don't like pop them. So I don't know if that's like even the term, but I think that's what people say, right? Exactly. Well, I mean, everybody's kind of familiar with the term getting the bends in the, in the diving world. Um, it's the it's it's a physics law of of gas. It's a simple gas law. So basically, what happens is a bubble at a certain pressure will expand with less pressure until it reaches the top. Uh, so same in in the fish. Basically, they have a swim bladder that is a bubble, and they can they can kind of 
manipulate the amount of, of air inside of it so they can stay vertical. But when you pull them up too fast, their bladder expands, and what that does is it flips them over, and then they can't swim back down because it's basically like they have a bobber inside of their belly. Uh, some fish, like, like lake trout or the salmonoids, they can, um, they can burp up air. Uh, fish like walleyes, perch, crappies, those kind of fish, they don't have that ability. That's regulated through um, something that's not connected to their digest digestive tract. So, you know, we, we, one of the things that you can do short term is take a really long time reeling them up. Um, I would say that we probably caught just as many fish as we we missed on our retrieve um just because you get them about halfway up and you could feel the hook shake and you know you're using the the tiny chunk tungsten ice jigs and you're vertical fishing over the side um and so you know you just want to let them fight and and kind of come up really slow and let their let them kind of acclimate um, this is really a long, slow process though. And I mean, sometimes you're reeling as slow as you can and keeping as much tension as you can. And that slow and tension process don't always go together. And so that really creates kind of, you know, a unique situation. Um, and so when Josh mentions, you know, losing a fish here and there, it's important, you know, to be okay with that. Um, especially in a catch and release situation, if your intention is to have that fish return back to you know where it's from it's it's really important that's in a condition that it can go back and i think that's exactly what josh is talking about you know it's great to catch a fish and it's great to release it but leaving it in a condition that it can return to its environment and i think that's one of the reasons we talked about the pike before is because i think on the camera um what this pike may have been doing is looking for these fish that you know might have been getting released from the boat that weren't ready to swim yet or just the weaker ones that weren't going into the dark like we were talking about but well um, kind of we weren't the only ones fishing out there that's absolutely uh so so kind of one of our theories were the was the the pike were following boats around just because, kind of just like ice fishing, well, where they'll hover around your hole when you're letting fish go, they were doing the same thing, picking these fish off, because sometimes you could get a fish off your hook and back in the water quick enough, they'll swim away, and they'll get like 10 feet down, and then all of a sudden they're, they flip upside down and float back up. Uh, so... And we, any we, good sportsman, that's the worst thing possible, is to be right. releasing fish and then finding out that they're just popping up right under your hole and you don't even know it. Um, and then that even ruins the rest of the fishing because then like the pike come through or hopefully something is eating it, but that's just really not. Well, and we're not, and, and we're not perfect either. We lost, we, we lost one to an eagle and we kept 12, 12 crappies this weekend. Over the weekend. Yeah. Um, we didn't, you know, we don't normally, normally keep a whole lot of fish, not cause we don't like fish, but we just don't normally keep them. But we did do like a survey of the area after we were done fishing right before we went and docked and we, we went and we only had to pick up like one or two. Um, but that kind of brings us to what we were talking about. We've so been... how do you release those fish back? Yeah. Well, so this conversation has been going on all week and basically we ended up looking up how do you release fish to the deep? Um, I don't know how many of you have watched saltwater shows but they have like the little grippy things that they hook onto the fish and they drop it down and then they can yank on it and it pops off and um you know i like to tinker so i was trying to figure out something like that and i was going through all these different web websites uh looking for something but the sea grant with the great lakes has a really cool article that i'll try and get posted at the bottom of the video here um but we just happened to have something set up very similar and I just, all I needed to do was make up a little quick leader. So for just the purposes of showing you guys, um, I just hooked on this coin weight. That's three ounces. I believe the, um, I believe the instructions say eight ounces per pound of fish. That might be a little bit of a, a little bit excessive, but you know, just 
depends on what you have on hand. The goal here, though, is that you don't want it to sink too slowly. You right. really do want to get the weight in the fish right back down there. So then, basically, I just tied a Snell knot on to, I think that's like a one-aught bait hook I got out of my catfish box. Um, you just want to dull down the tip so it's just rounded off, pinch the barb. And so basically all this is doing, because it's you want, you want the tip pointed down to the weight. And so that's just holding on to your fish, fish's Bring lip, it as it goes down. And then you just have some sort of reel. We have, we have a little inline ice reel here where you can, you can adjust the drag so it just pulls line out. And you just hook the fish on by the bottom jaw, drop it down until you can you know you can drop it down until it hits the bottom you can mark on here um the depth the the depth so you know exactly where to stop it and then you just lift up and then the fish can swim off and it the the bladder will shrink back down to the pressure that it came from and according to the people over at the sea grant um they say that if you release the fish within two minutes that they should be fine um so what's you know what's the what's the harm in in a couple crappies you know who cares what's a couple crappies but the thing is is that going back to what we were talking about we weren't the only people out there so a couple crappies can turn into a couple hundred crappies really quick um, and especially with these the the panfish management plan going in and and I don't know about you guys but we've definitely seen some improvements on some of the bodies of water that have that plan implemented. Um, and we're here in Wisconsin, you know, we've seen this not just our home lake, we've seen this, you know, others around it, surrounding areas that it's just really great to see the quality of the fish going up, sometimes the size of the fish going up, um, but really the responsible fishermen out there, that's what contributes to that. Right. And so this will work, this will work with, with any fish that you're getting out of that 20 plus feet of water that shows those signs. Um, you know, the, the eyes will kind of be bulgy. You'll see a distended stomach where it'll look like a balloons in there. Um, one of the, a couple of the telltale signs is you'll get the, you'll, the fish will kind of stop fighting and then it'll just kind of flip upside down. Um, we were noticing there was a little bit of a tail curl where they're sitting there. So like, just, just kind of look for those signs and and if you can bring an apparatus like this this is you know this is just a really cheap rod we use this if, if you've seen this before we also use this for our trolling cam <laughs> for our aqua view um so it's kind of a multi-use tool now but you know if if you guys have any tips or tricks you know let us know like is there something different than this that you guys get your fish safely back down to the deep um yeah so i guess that's kind of all we had to talk about for that uh but with that being said fall and going into winter fish are going deep um water temps are going down and cannot wait to be on the hard top um we've also got a few of the ice shows coming up so while we're here you know sioux falls blaine minnesota st paul all really great shows there's a few more around than that but Never know where we'll, where we'll pop in. Yeah, so keep an eye out. Uh, Sioux Falls is two weeks, November eighth. So that's a great show. If if you haven't if you haven't heard of the Dakota Ice Angler Institute, um, it's it's definitely worth going to if you're within driving distance. Uh, we drive eight hours to go go work that show. <laughs> it's a great show. It's a great time. Um, and then after that, we have Blaine. That's a that's a neat little show, uh, a good good one that's kind of centrally located, uh, not necessarily as busy as St. Paul, so you can get some of your deals before you go go hit that that zoo, um, but then you know we'll we'll be hitting a couple bait shops, some sporting goods stores, and then St. Paul, and then the ice. Hopefully, then the ice. So yeah, just let us know. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact us. Uh, or I'm gonna try let and... us know how you release your fish. Right, and I'm going to try and post that uh, C Grant thing on there. So, 
Have a good night. Have a good night, guys.